Is there somebody who can keep time for the speakers? Okay, well, I'll tell you what. If you get to uh, a minute left, I'll give you a signal with one finger, you know, that sort of thing. I'll put my hand in the air. Maybe it won't be that big a deal. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, there's a quote by Irma Bombeck. She states, there must be something wrong with a mother who washes a measuring cup with soap and water after she has just used it to measure water. Sometimes we uh, make uh, we take unnecessary actions because sometimes it's just a natural habit, or sometimes some, sometimes we just don't know what we're doing. Previously in our class, we watched a video of a sample persuasive essay on disinfecting wipes, um, how we purchase disinfecting wipes, sprays, and also hand sanitizers, but they really just don't work. A uh, majority of us, like myself, did not know this. Uh, did, did not know this. Just like how we don't know that the daily habits that we are we are doing could actually cause harm to us. Today, I would like to share how um, um, the actions that we take and daily habits and household items can actually be counterproductive. Today, I'm going to be talking about how hair washing, um, dishwashing sponges, and how washing machines can be um, counterproductive. Then afterwards, I will talk about um, how, what solutions we can take or actions we can take to prevent these issues from happening. First, let's go over how hair washing can be counterproductive. So Anna, who is a beauty blogger and actually hair blogger, um, started to realize that her hair was getting brittle, her hair was turning dry, and she had a lot of split ends. And she noticed that her hair was shedding over a period of time, um, more than usual. Was she going bald? No. She was simply, she found out that she was overwashing her hair by, um, by her hairdresser. So Gail Fedricks, who is a hair care innovator and also um, a hair expert states that a lot of these products that are made, uh, um, shampoo and conditioner, are marketed and formulated to have your hair more healthier, um, hair more shiny, also um, to be free of dangles, uh, dandruff and tangles. So usually with the overuse of these type of products, it could cause the actually opposite effect on your hair. It could cause your hair to be damaged, it could cause your hair to be, um, cause your hair to have an obstruction of growth. Um, and over, if you overuse these type of products, um, extreme cases, your hair would also uh, exacerbate for your hair to fall out. Um, so when, when you wash, over, wash your hair, it actually removes the natural oils um, from your hair that actually protects your hair. Now that we talked about how hair washing could be um, counterproductive, now let's talk about how dishwashing, um, dishwashing sponges could be counterproductive. So a lot of people use their dishwashing sponges for their countertops, their eating utensils, and their, their dishes. But little do they know that the small uh, sponge that you have in your kitchen could, could have as much bacteria as um, have as much bacteria as your toilet has. So um, there was a study that was produced by Marcus Erger, who was a microbiologist, collected 12 different sponges from a lot of different families. He found in those sponges 362 different species of bacteria living in those sponges. It ranged from sponges that were like harmless and then from bad bacteria that cause meningitis, um, human infections, and also pneumonia. These targeted, these are really bad for people that had weak immune systems uh, from elderly people and also children. Um, now that we talked about how dishwashing sponges are counterproductive, let's talk about how your washing machine can be counterproductive. So your washing machine is used for, of course, to clean your clothes and to disinfect and to, um, to help with pleasant scent of your clothes. So a lot of people, however, um, their washing machines are caus causing the opposite effect and having um, a moldy scent after they wash their clothes. Why is this? Because a lot of, over time, a lot of mold can build up in your washing machines because mold likes to thrive in damp places. Um, so when mold likes to thrive in damp places, it actually transfers to your clothes and could cause actually, um, it also hosts and also cause um, asthma, make you more susceptible to flu or colds. And what I most find disgusting is it could cause you to have a skin infection because it transfers to your clothes onto your skin. So now that we talked about um, uh, the, the issues and counterproductive um, actions that we take, let's talk about the solutions we can take to prevent these. 
So first, let's talk about the solutions we have with hair washing. We recommend, um, hairdressers recommend to wash your hair, it's a, at most every other day, but it's best to wash your hair at least twice to three times a week. Um, if your hair gets really oily, um, try to use dry shampoo in your hair to at least um, absorb the oil, but it doesn't damage the oil. And the ingredients that I was previously talking about how it could damage your hair was sodium um, lysolate and um, also sulfate that's in the ingredients that strips off um, the oils in your hair. Um, now let's talk about how dishwashing sponges, the solutions we have for dishwashing sponges. We recommend having plastic, um, plastic sponges because plastic sponges dry up faster. With regular foam sponges, it, it takes longer to dry up where bacteria could grow in there. Another um, tip that we have is try to avoid using your sponge with the raw meat because it's cross-contamination. Another tip that we have is don't be so attached to your sponges. <laughs> try to discard it at least one to, uh, at, um, at most one to two weeks. Um, and if you do, don't want to, if, if you don't want to let your sponge go, throw it in the microwave for about a minute. It does kill some bacteria, but not all. Um, now that we talked about how dishwashing sponges, um, what actions we could take about uh, with dishwashing sponges, let's talk about your washer. So your washer, like I previously talked about, how mold likes to thrive in warm places. After you wash your clothes, leave your washer a door open. If you have kids, crack it open a little bit, so um, it will prevent any dangerous, you know, situations happening. Um, if you already have mold in your um, in your washing machines, it is recommended to place it on um, hot, a hot wash and put chlorine in there with no laundry so it could clean your bath, um, your washer tub. So now that we talked about how hair, um, over, over washing your hair could be damaging and how dishwashing sponges could have more bacteria than your toilet seat and how wash, uh, washing machines could contain mold that could cause skin infections, hopefully this will make you guys all aware of the counterproductive actions that you guys are taking today and also make you more aware of the harmful things that could, uh, potential harmful things that um, are lurking in your homes. All right, Rihanna, what did you think? Um, overall, I thought her speech was really good. Her organization was clear, and her stance, um, her transitions flowed easily, and she was she talked like she knew what she was talking about. She was very specific about a lot of things, very in depth, and yeah. Um, I like the quote at the beginning as an attention device. I thought that worked really well, and uh, you do have a good transition to what your topic is. Uh, I like that. There's a preview at the start of the speech so we know where you're headed. Organizationally, it's easy to follow. I think the transitions need to be a little bit smoother. They, they sound kind of repetitive, you know. And you know, now that we know this, let's go to this. And now that we know this, we need to go this. Uh, yeah, I think you need some of that kind of creative language. This would be a place to, to, to do some of those sorts of things. You know, uh, if you thought it was a problem washing your hair, imagine how frequently you were washing your dishes using a sponge. You know, some, some line that kind of does move from one point to the other, but without necessarily drawing attention to the fact that we are making a transition. So it sounds a little bit more organic. You're still kind of at that mechanical stage that we've talked about before where I can tell that you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. You just haven't gotten quite to that skillful level where you have to... Smoothly and 
Yeah, where, you're, where, where it's all coming a little bit more naturally and smoothly. But you're doing a, a, a good job on everything. Content, I thought that you start off pretty well with some information, uh, but the, the information doesn't get cited very consistently in the presentation. You mentioned, for instance, on the hair thing that uh, there are natural oils that get washed away. And I'm going, where did you find that out? Who told you this? Where did this information came, come from? Uh, the you got you do cite the one microbiologist on that second point, and I thought, okay, that's pretty good. But then you present some information that talks about um, some of the diseases that could be there, and I don't get a source for that. I don't have any examples of people who've gotten sick from either cross contamination or from some of the. Uh, things that could happen from the bacteria that are there. And that would be a, a point that would make it a little bit fuller and more interesting. And then uh, the same thing on the washing machine. I, I didn't hear any source citation on that particular point. So it feels like you've got an idea here. You've got some idea about what it is that you're going to say, but there's not any uh, research to support that point. And I'm sure that you must have done some research on this, but it's not worming its way into the speech uh, with a citation. So there's a little bit in the first point, uh, some in the second point, none in the third point. And then when you get back to the solutions as you're talking about each of those points, I thought, well, we'll get some more content there. And it really, it's just, where did your tips come from? You've got all these tips that you're going to give us and I don't know where they came from. I don't know why you think they're going to work. I don't have any proof that they're going to work except your say so, which you know, I, I might be inclined to believe you, but I don't know you that well. You know, what do, what do you know about washing machines and mold? Uh, you know, I, I have no idea. That's why I think you need to do the research a little bit more. Presentation things, you do a very nice job speaking to the audience. You're good at that. Uh, I think your voice is very engaged when you're talking to us. You do have a tendency to kind of shift your weight from one side to the other. It's not quite a dance, but it is, you know, that little thing that you're doing there. So that's that's a problem that I think you want to be careful about. All right, thank you.